So we just spent a lot of time talking about liquid rocket fuels, but as we saw on the space shuttle and Artemis with the space launch system, we also have solid rocket boosters. So what's going on with that? So the basic idea here is that you get the both the fuel and the oxidizer and turn them into some solid form, maybe encapsulating them or some thick, gunky, plastic-type chemical that can also do these things, yep. and then you mix them together. Okay. In, in solid form. This is actually how gunpowder works. Okay, yeah, yeah, Gunpowder yeah, yeah. is a mixture of different elements, some which oxidize, some which are fuel, so... Um, and the benefit is you don't need fuel tanks and high pumps and everything else. You just have one thing. Yes, and you just set fire to it and let the flames come out. So it's very simple. It doesn't get you quite the same exhaust velocity. But, I mean, the, the Falcon 9 one was about three kilometers per so second. Not, so, yeah, it's not, it's not too that bad. bad. And it's very simple. Yep. So the way the engine works, um, you basically get a very long tube and you have wrapped around the inside all the way up a, a, a ring of the fuel um, mixed again with, with the, the propellant and the oxidizer. Yep. With a hollow tube down the middle. And you can play with different geometries, like it could be a star-shaped hole down the middle or something yeah, like yeah. this, depending on the exact thrust profile you want. And basically, you have to ignite it all the way down the middle simultaneously. You'll yep. do that somehow, maybe by dumping some explosive chemical down the middle. And then it lights all the way down the middle and starts burning from the middle towards the outside. Yep. Producing huge amounts of gas that flow down to the bottom. And then you have a carefully designed nozzle at the bottom to let that expand out and push outwards. And as you said, this has the benefit you don't have your fuel tank, your oxygen tank, the pump to mix it, to ignite it, and the exhaust to do it. You just have kind of one thing. Yes, um, and that's a, that's a major advantage. It's very simple in some yeah. sense. It has drawbacks. Basically, once you light it, you can't <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> I get you're right. With the liquid rocket fuel, you just turn. You can turn off the the flow of oxygen uh, if you really need, or both, and stop your engine. And this will be used first of all from an abort. Let's yeah. say something's going wrong halfway up, you can turn it off and eject. Yes. Well, you can't do that with solid rocket boosters. Once you light the candle, the candle's going. And also, for, if you're a SpaceX and you want to land it again, their rockets can actually turn off, steer around, and then turn on again to land. You that's can't right. do with solid rocket boosters. Again, because once you've ignited that fuel source, that's it. And as we'll talk a bit later, they also have a bit of a bad reputation for accidents with these things. Yes. Uh, but of course, a simpler solid rocket booster is fireworks, of which you see large numbers. Um, most of them are actually used by the military. Here's a Sidewinder missile in early testing. Because cause you're right, it has a, a fuel source, which is a solid propellant that ignited and has the missile go. Yes, of course. So for most military purposes, and of course you have to bear in mind that the vast majority of rockets in the world yes. are attached to multiple launch rocket systems, ballistic missiles, things like that. And for those, you don't want to have to fill them up with liquid hydrogen, liquid helium. And, and have it oxygen. stored and checked because there's a lot of management there. You just want it ready to go. So when you press the ignite button, it ignites and goes. And so the simplest way to do it, which is the way most of these things work nowadays, is just to use a solid rocket booster. Yep. It means you can't throttle, just has to fire and fire and then go. But it means you can have some low pay grades. Engineer just load them on without having to deal with cryogenics. And you can't want to think, oh, the enemies are coming. Quick, let's get it. Order up a tank of liquid hydrogen. That's right. Oh, we've got to store it. We've got to mix it. We've got to check it now. Oh, wait, it's not cool enough yet. So, yes, this is definitely the way that most... Uh, military rockets yeah. work and uh, a lot of it was invented for ballistic missiles that's right in fact most of the solid rocket boosters are more or less made by the same people who make ballistic missiles yes. again you want something that can sit in your nuclear weapon submarine for years, years. that needing to be reloaded with everything that's right and then fire reliably and most uh, submariners probably don't want to be next to large tanks of highly <laughs> potent cryogenic explosives <laughs> that's right sitting in their submarine <laughs> so so they do have a lot of advantages but you said um they have been used in space. Yes, so as we saw, the outer tubes on the space shuttle were solid rocket boosters. That's right. Um, and the Artemis uh, space rocket again has solid rocket boosters, boosters on the outside. Sun. So you see it take off here at night. And what you're mostly seeing in terms of the flame is the solid rocket boosters. So they ignite them while whole, clamping the whole thing down for yep. a sec yep. until they're fully alight. And then you can trigger everything else and it will take off, which you'll hopefully see. Here we go. Yep. So it's going to lift off and they release the clasp. And so it, the solid rocket boosters, the white ones in the this side. This is the slow motion stuff. We have the hydrogen and oxygen fuel tank for the inside. Yes, and what you're seeing is mostly the solid rocket boosters. That's right. Hydroxygen is burning in the middle there, but it's almost invisible yep. compared to everything else. Um, now the trouble is, the, the safety record is not yes. that great. Now, 
of course, liquid fuel rockets can and have blown up. They do, that's but right. But there have been a bunch of particularly high profile accidents using solid rocket boosters. Part right. of the trouble is that there's burning up and down the entire length of this tank. That's right. Whereas in liquid fuel, all the actual burning is happening down the bottom in the and engine. And a very small part. And everything else right. is actually quite cool. So this is the Space Shuttle Challenger. Yes. And what happened is because it was being launched on a very cold day, some of the rubber O-rings that connected the different parts of the outer casing, it wasn't just one solid tube, it was several metal That's rings right. that s attached together with rubber O-rings, and they'd become brittle because of the cold weather. And on the launch yeah. pad, only seen after the event, there was some black smoke coming out from the O-rings. Yeah. And then as it went higher into space, it managed to burn through. When you're making the solid rocket casing, you have to have a very, very pure... If you have any cracks in the That's fuel, right. yeah. the crack will have a larger surface area. And because there's a larger surface area, it'll burn faster, so the crack will get faster and larger, so it becomes very unstable. Or a bubble in the fuel mix as well. So you have to go up and down X-raying the whole thing to make sure there are no bubbles and no cracks. And as you said, once it's ignited as well, they can't do anything about it. So once they turn on the engines, there wasn't much you can do. In this case, some flame leaked out through this hole in the O-ring, played against the liquid hydrogen tank, ignited that, detonated the whole thing. Yeah. They then separated, so these are where the rocket boosters are flying off separately by themselves. All rockets have to be designed so they can be remotely That's destroyed right. from the ground, so, when they're going, so they don't go off track and hit someone. In fact, in a lot of cases now, the, uh, the capsule has an ejection where they, the capsule sitting on top ejects the other way from the rocket in this case. And this is also why you want to usually launch over the ocean because if they need to blow it up, there's yeah. no one underneath. So it was actually the hydrogen tank that exploded, yes. but it was exploded because of a leak in the solid boosters right. in this case. Uh, another even worse disaster was uh, the Brazilian uh, rocket test. They had a solid rocket booster which ignited three minutes prematurely. A spark somehow got into it and that actually killed 21 technicians yes. and destroyed the launch pad and so on. So. That being said, there are an awful lot of these things sitting in Air Force bases and ballistic missile silos all over the world. That's right. Probably if a ballistic missile blew up, we wouldn't know about it. So That's there, right. There might have been any number of especially in Russia. So, But, but as you said, they have a downside that uh, if something goes wrong, it usually goes catastrophically wrong with no option to stop it.